For problem one, we are given the equation 6x plus 5y equals to 10. We need to find the uh, x and y intercepts. The y intercept is when you put in 0 for x. The x intercept is when you put in 0 for y. The answers are right here. When you put in 0 for x, you get 2 for y. And when you put in 0 for y, you get 5 thirds for x. Here's the work for that, putting in 0 for x. And you uh, get 5y equals 10 divided by 5y equals 2. So that's where the 0, 2 comes from. And then putting in uh, y equals 0, and you get 6x equals to 10 divided by 6. Um, and that's uh, 5 over 3. This should be a 6 right here. I'm sorry, I had to fix that real fast. Should be a 6 right here. 6. And then we just reduce, reduce it down to 5 thirds to get those right there. So these are the... Uh, x and y intercepts and you should list them in points just like this right here so i'll do that by putting them into points we have the y int is 0 2 and the x int is 5 thirds comma 0 and then to graph it we would go to 0 1 2 that's this point right there and then 5 thirds, 5 thirds is actually equal to uh, 1 and 2 thirds. So we go 1 and about 2 thirds right there. We make ourselves a line. As long as I say 5 thirds right here for the x and 2 for the y, put an x and a y, I should be in good shape. Okay, for problem two, we're going to use the point-slope equation, y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1, and also the slope-intercept equation, y equals mx plus b. We're given a point, minus 2, comma 7, and we're given a slope, m equals to minus 3 fourths. So we'll start with the point-slope equation and say y minus the y-coordinate of 7 is equal to m, which is negative 3 over 4, times x minus minus 2. This is a 4. Um, that could be x plus 2. We'll do that right now. y minus 7 is equal to negative 3 over 4 times x plus 2 because of the two negatives. Notice there's a minus sign there and a minus sign in the formula. Next, we distribute. y minus 7 is negative 3 over 4 times x and minus because minus times positive is negative. 3 uh, times 2 is 6 over 4 times 1, so that's 6 over 4, which of course will reduce. But we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll reduce it right here. y minus 7 equals minus 3 over 4x minus 3 over 2. And then we need to add 7 to both sides. So minus 3 over 2 plus 7 is minus 3 over 2 plus 14 over 2. Fix this a little bit. That's a 2 here, but not a 7. Then I said 14 divided by 2 is 7. So I'm adding 7, but now I have common denominators. So 14 minus 3 is 11 over 2. So I get y is equal to negative 3 over 4. x plus 14 minus 3 is 11 divided by 2. And this, of course, is your answer right here. Problem three, we're going to add in the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And number three has given us two points, 1, 2, comma, 7, 6. So first we'll find m by saying 6 subtract 2 divided by 7 subtract 1, which becomes 4 divided by 6, which reduces down to 2 thirds. So that's our m right there. Now we're going to take this m and we're going to put it into the point-slope equation. Picking one of these two points, I kind of like the first one, so we'll use this one as our x1 and this one as our x2, and write y minus 2 is equal to 2 thirds times x minus 1. I could have used 7, 6, but I like 1, 2 better. Now we'll just clean it up. y minus 2 is equal to 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds, just distribute, and we have to add 2 to both sides. So over here we have negative 2 thirds uh, plus 2 over 1 becomes negative 2 over 3 plus uh, 6 over 3, which reduces down to 4 thirds. 6 minus 2 is 4. So we get y is equal to 2 over 3x uh, 
uh, plus the value of 4 over 3. And there's your answer. For problem 4, we are given the point 3, comma, negative 4. And it's supposed to be parallel to 4x plus y equals to 5. I can rearrange this by subtracting 4x from both sides to this. More importantly, I can say m is equal to negative 4. This is an m right here. So that means the slope is negative 4. Now, if it's going to have a parallel line, it must have the same slope. So I can come over here and say m is equal to negative 4. And now I'm done with this stuff over here. We're going to take a new problem where we have m is equal to minus 4 and a point. So we'll use the point slope equation as y. Uh, I'm going to say minus minus 4 or plus 4 is equal to negative 4 times x minus 3. There's a, a subtraction there and a negative there, so we get plus 4. And then we'll just proceed like this. Plus 4 is equal to negative 4x and minus times minus is positive 12. Subtract 4, subtract 4, we get y equals to minus 4x uh, plus 8. And that is your answer. Okay, so for problem 5, we're given the point minus 3, 2, and it's supposed to be perpendicular to this equation. Note here that m is equal to negative 4. That's a 4. So we come over here, we say m is equal to, well, we first have to flip that and change the sign. So when we flip it, we get uh, negative 1 fourth, but when we change the sign, we get positive 1 over 4. And that's going to be our new slope. And we'll just go ahead and use the uh, point slope equation again and say y minus 2 is equal to 1 over 4 times x minus minus 3, so plus 3. So y minus 2 is equal to 1 over 4, x, that's a 4, uh, plus 3 fourths. And we just have to add 2. I'll do that over here. 3 over 4 plus 2 over 1 becomes 3 over 4 plus 8 over 4, 8 over 4 is 2, that makes 11 over 4. So y is equal to 1 over 4, x plus 11 over 4, that's a 4. And this is your solution. For number 6, we're going to let x equal to the months and y equal to the cost. So the cost y will be equal to the number of months, in other words, uh, Looks like we have uh, $20 per month, plus the one-time cost of $80 to enroll. And there's an equation relating x to y. And if we want to solve that for two months, we would put in 2 for x, so y would be equal to 20 times 2 plus 80, or 40 plus 80, which would be 120 uh, we should finish that off and say dollars. So $120 for a two-month membership. Here's your answer. For problem seven, we are given this equation and we want to solve it for r. So that means to get r all by itself from one side. I'll start by doing the distributive property. So a is equal to p times one plus p times r times t right there. Now I'm going to subtract p from both sides. To get a minus p is equal to p times r times t. And since I want r alone, I'm going to divide by p, t on both sides. Get those to cancel. We get a minus p over p times t is equal to r, which we could turn around and say r is equal to a minus p over p, t. There's your answer. Okay, for problem 8, we have 3x plus 2y is greater than 6, and x is less than or equal to 4. We'll stop by, start by looking at the borders here, where it's just equal to, and I need to solve this for y, so I'll have 2y is equal to minus 3x plus 6. I just subtracted 3x from both sides. Divide 3 by 2 to get y equals minus 3 over 2x plus, well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I can now graph that line right there. I can say the y-intercept is 3. 1, 2, 3. So that's 3. And then from there, we're going to go down 3 and over 2. 
this point here. Because there's a uh, strictly greater than, I'm going to make a dotted line through here like this. And then I have to decide whether to shade on this side or on this side. I'll take that test point of 0, 0 right there. Put it into the equation up here. Let's check that right over here. We'll have a 0 times 3 plus 2 times 0. Is that greater than 6? Well, that's all 0. And 0 is not bigger than 6. So I don't want to shade that side. I want to shade the other side. So let me get rid of that for a second. And that means I can shade all of this over here because zero, zero did not work. That was my test point, zero, zero. Now, x equals four is a vertical line. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. That's one, two, three, four. And we're gonna make a solid line because it's uh, less than or equal to. We'll go solid line up this way and down this way. And we're going to shade uh, less than or equal to four. That's over here. That's all of this. Okay, now had this been an or problem, had been or, we would just uh, keep everything. But because it's an and, and means we have to find the intersection of the blue and the red shading. So if I take out this red shading here, kind of carefully take it out there, trying to keep my graph there a little bit. So, uh, Something like that. And also take out, uh, let's see, the blue on the other side of that line there. So we have, basically, if I want to fill all this in now, it would be this region right in here with a solid border on that side and a dotted border on that side. And that's an and problem for number eight. Okay. All right, problem 10 gives us a function f of x equals to 5x minus 9, and then we are supposed to find the following. For a, we have f of 8. That means we just put an 8 wherever there's an x like this. Okay, and then we get, oops, that's a minus sign. And that becomes, uh, what, 40 minus 9, which is equal to 31. For part b, we have f of negative 6. So it becomes 5 times negative 6 minus 9. That is negative 30 minus 9 or negative 39. Okay, in part C, we have f of t minus 4. So we put a t minus 4 in for the x, so 5 times t minus 4 is e minus 9. Just distribute to get 5t minus 20 minus 9 or 5t minus 29. And those are your answers right there. Let me just circle them. A, B, and C. Okay, for problem 11, we are given this uh, system of equations, and it says to use a substitution. Substitution method. Okay, that means we're going to take this first equation. Oh, we could take any equation and solve for any variable, but I like that y right there. So let me take this equation right here, bring it down here, and say y is equal to 3x plus 11. What I did was added 3x to both sides. Now I'll substitute this y in for this y right there. Let me point right there. So I get 4x plus 3y is equal to 7. 4x plus 3y is equal to 7, but we use this y of 3x plus 11. So 4x plus 9x plus 33 is equal to 7. Combine like terms, I get 13x plus 33 is equal to 7. We'll subtract 33 to get 13x is equal to, what is that, negative 26? Divide by 13, and x is equal to negative 2. So we know the point is minus 2 for the x. To find the y, we go back here and say y is equal to 3 times negative 2 plus 11. That would be negative 6 plus 11, or uh, I think that's 5. So I'll put a 5 here. And then we can test it. Minus 2 times minus 3 is positive 6, plus 5 is 11, so that checks out. 
and minus 2 times 4 is negative 8, uh, plus 15 is also 7. So this is the solution point right there. For problem 12, we're given another system of equations. 2x plus 3y equals 17. 3x minus y equals minus 13. This time, I'm going to choose a particular value to multiply one equation by. One option here would take this equation and multiply by 3 because that will put a 3 here. Negative 3y and positive 3y would then cancel. Don't forget to multiply the whole equation. So I'm going to move the first equation down. I'm going to multiply this out. 3 times 3 is 9x. 3 times minus 3 is minus 3y, and that's what we wanted. And 3 times minus 13 is equal to negative 39. Okay, and then we're going to add straight down. So this will be 2x to 9x, or 11x. These will cancel by design. And this is going to be equal to uh, 22 negative. All right, and then what we do here is we divide by 11 to get x equals to minus 2. So we know minus 2 is the first coordinate. Now we can pick either equation to put in for uh, x. I might as well just pick the first one. 2 times minus 2 plus 3y has to turn out to be 17. Negative 4 plus 3y is equal to 17. We'll add 4. So we get 3y is equal to uh, 21. y must be 7. And that looks like the right answer there. For problem 13, we're going to reduce this into lowest terms. Uh, I want to remind you of the difference of squares formula and also the fact that a minus b over b minus a equals minus 1 because on the top, that's actually 9 squared minus y squared over y minus 9. That becomes 9 plus y, 9 minus y, according to the difference of squares formula, all over y minus 9. Now I wrote those two together because using that second formula, this box right here, becomes minus 1. So this is minus 1 times 9 plus y, or just minus 9 plus y. You can also write that as minus y plus 9 because it looks a little better, but either one of these answers it's acceptable. Okay, for 14, we start out with this division right here. And the first thing I want to do is take that division sign and turn it to a multiplication sign by flipping the second fraction. So we have this second uh, expression. Then I'm going to take each one of these terms, I'm going to factor it blue here. Uh, this becomes a difference of squares, and these are three trinomials that we can factor. Uh, these are the factorizations. How to factor a trinomial, we've talked about, and you can look that up separately. These are the factorizations, so you can work those out on another piece of paper. There are methods to this. Then we just reinstall them. We, here I have 3w plus 1, 3w minus 1. That's for the first term, and so on. And the last step here is to just cross off what we can. So I have a 2w plus 3 and a 2w plus 3. I have a 3w minus 1 and a 3w minus 1, another 3w minus 1, another 3w minus 1. Now what did not get crossed off is this 3w plus 1 and that w minus 2. So that's my answer. 3w plus 1 over w minus 2. This is the solution. Now, these factorizations were actually the meat of the problem here. So you should spend your time remembering how to factor both the difference of squares and trinomials. And there are resources for those. But once you factor them, you see it's just a matter of crossing off the ones that are the same on the top and bottom. So this is where the real work is. Okay, for 15, we're going to add these two uh, rational expressions or fractions. Uh, basically, what I've shown you here is that this factorization of this trinomial is right here. Again... Learning how to factor a trinomial is uh, pretty important. So I can rewrite this trinomial with these two factors. Noting that they both have an x plus 4, but now I need a 3x minus 1. So I'll write that here. 3x minus 1 times x plus 4 plus x minus 1 times 3x minus 1 x plus 4. 
Now notice from here to here, there's this new 3x minus 1, so it needs to be new up here too. Like that. And then I can multiply that out to get 9x minus 3 over 3x minus 1 times x plus 4 plus x minus 1 over 3x minus 1 times x plus 4. Now that they have the same denominators, I'll put those there, 3x minus 1 times x plus 4. And I'll do this, 9x plus another x is 10x. Negative 3 plus a negative 1 is negative 4. And then what we have here is the answer. For problem 16, we have a compound fraction. That's a fraction made up of fractions. And I'm going to put an invisible one underneath one of these. So you can see that the common denominator for all four is x. So I'm going to multiply the top uh, x minus 1 and the bottom by x minus 1. Put parentheses here so you can see that I'm going to distribute 4x uh, minus 3 on the top. And 5x uh, minus 1 on the bottom. So the answer is 4x minus 3 on the top and 5x minus 1 on the bottom. I took advantage of multiplying the top and the bottom by the common denominator for all 4. Here 4 times x is 4x. Here the x is canceled, so minus 3. x times 5 is 5x. The x is canceled, so minus 1. And there's your answer. All right, for problem 17, we are going to solve an actual equation. So now we need to multiply 3 by the common denominator. Let me rewrite this. 3 over x plus 1 is equal 1 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x minus 1 x plus 1 because that's the difference of squares. So now we're going to multiply 3 by the common denominator on the top and the bottom. So we'll have x plus 1 times x minus 1 times 3 over x plus 1, that's the common denominator that's down here, is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 1 times 1 over x minus 1 minus x plus 1 times x minus 1 2 over x plus 1 x minus 1. Sorry for fitting it into the corner there, but I want to show you that here the red underline, that's the common denominator, that's the common denominator, that's the common denominator, and the rest of it is 3 over x plus 1 equals 1 over x minus 1 uh, minus 2 over x minus 1, x plus 1. I wrote those backwards, but it won't matter because both of those are going to cancel. So I'll start canceling away and get 3x minus 3, when you multiply those out, is equal to here we have x minus 1 cancel, so it'll be just x plus 1. Uh, and then minus both of those cancel out, so just 2. So 3x minus 3 is equal to x plus 1 minus 2, which is uh, minus 1. So let's subtract an x, subtract an x to get 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 1. We'll add 3 to get 2x equals to 2, or x equals to 1. Now, this could be the answer, except when I put 1 into this right here, what is 1 minus 1? Well, that's 0, and we don't divide by 0, so this answer doesn't work. So the official answer is no solution. You can write it like that, or you can actually say no solution. I think that's a better way to write it. Okay, for problem 18, we're going to be using direct variation. That means the first variable will be equal to k times the second variable. And in this problem, the second variable says the square of x, that's x squared. We also know that uh, y is equal to uh, 12 and x equals to 3, which means that 12 uh, is equal to k times 3 squared. So... 12 squared, sorry, put 9. Uh, 12 is equal to uh, 9k. We're going to divide by 9, divide by 9. 
So we get k equals to 12 ninths, which is the same thing as 4 thirds. So we now have y is equal to 4 over 3 times x squared. And they want to know what y is when x equals to 6. So we'll do y is equal to 4 thirds times 6 squared, or y equals to 4 over 3 times 36. Uh, y is equal to, well, 3 goes into 36 12 times, so 4 times 12, or y is equal to 48, which is your answer right there. That's a 48. All right, for number 19, we'll be using inverse variation. That's the first variable is equal to k divided by the second variable. And in 19, we have y is equal to k divided by x. And we know that y is 24 uh, when x is 4. Multiplying both sides of the equation here by 4, like this, times 4, times 4, we get that. Uh, k turns out to be 96, so I'll put that in for k. And that k is right there. And then we have y is equal to 96 over x. And then they want to know what y is when x is 12. Well, we'll put a 12 in for the x, and it turns out that 96 divided by 12 is 8, so there's your answer, y equals 8. For problem 20, we're going to use that a raised to the m over n is equal to the nth root of a raised to the m. Notice that the denominator is the root. So for 9, over five, nine raised to the 5 over 2, you see how the n became the root and 5 is the exponent? The square root of 9 is 3, this is to the 5th power, uh, 3 to the 5th power is 243. And then for 21, we have 64 to the negative 2 thirds. Well, first of all, a to the uh, minus n is equal to 1 over a to the positive n, so that means I have this new equation here, or this new expression, 1 over 64 to the 2 thirds. Then using the previous thing, I get 1 over the cube root of 64. That's the cube root of 64. It's a 3 in there, raised to the second power, which is 1 over, well, the cube root of 64 is 4, so this is 1 over 4 squared, also known as 1 over 16. Okay. For problem 22, it says 3 plus the square root of 7, the whole thing squared. So there's actually two of those binomials. That's what the 2 means. And then we'll FOIL it out. The first will be 9. The other will be plus 3 square roots of 7. And the inner will also be plus 3 square roots of 7. And the last will be the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which would be, well, 7. So 9 and 7 make uh, 16 plus uh, 6 square roots of 7. For 23, I have 3 over 8 minus the square root of 5. I want to multiply the top and bottom by 8 plus the square root of 5. 8 plus the square root of 5. When you FOIL this one out, you get 8 times 8, which is 64, uh, plus 8 square roots of 5. Let me write that out a little better. I'll do it down here. Uh, 64 plus 8 square roots of 5 minus 8 square roots of 5 uh, minus 5. And on top I'll have 24 plus 3 square roots of 5. These cancel and 64 take away 5 is 59. So we have uh, 24 plus 3 square roots of 5 over 59. And there's your answer. For problem 24, I have 18y plus 3 square roots of 28y cubed all over 12y. Let's start by looking at that expression right there. I can separate the 28 as 4 times 7. The y cubed is y squared times y, which means the 4 comes out as a 2. y squared comes out as a y, and a 7 and a y stay in there. Replacing it, I have 18y plus 3 times 2y square root of 7y all over 12y. This becomes 18y plus 6y square root of 7y all over 12y. Now it turns out that 6 goes in and 6y goes into all of these. So 6y goes in here twice, in here once, in here three times. 
So that my answer is actually 3 plus 1 times square root of 7y all over 2, or simply 3 plus the square root of 7y divided by 2. There's your answer. All right, for problem 25, I'm going to go ahead and write this as 6 is equal to the square root of 8y minus 4. Uh, I just added it to both sides. Now I'm going to square both sides. So 36 is equal to 8y minus 4. That's squaring this side and squaring this side. And then I'll go ahead and add 4. To get 40 is equal to 8y and divide by 8. So y, so 5 is equal to y, or y equals to 5. Let's go ahead and check. Uh, 8 times 5 is 40. 40 minus 4 is 36. So 6 minus the square root of 36 is 6 minus 6, or 0. So this checks out, and yep, there's your answer. All right, for problem 26, we're going to start out by subtracting 11 from both sides to get z plus 8 squared is equal to negative 4. Now that has no real solutions because the squares cannot be negative, but if we do take the square root of both sides, of course account for plus and minus, you get z plus 8 on this side, and that becomes the square root of 4, which is 2, don't forget the plus and minus, and the negative makes an i. And all we have to do now is subtract 8 from both sides. z is equal to negative 8 plus and minus 2i. And that's both your answers right there. That's a funny Z, I know, but that's a Z. Okay. All right, for 27, we're using complete the square, which means we have to add the middle term divided by 2 to both sides, making sure first that the A, of course, is 1. In this case, it is. And we want our constant all alone. So I'm going to put plus 49 right here, and also plus 49 right there. That's a 49. All right, so that one actually can factor now into n plus 7 squared. Notice that 7 times 7 is 49, and 7 plus 7 is 14. Over here, we can add those together to get 50, 64, it looks like. And then we'll take the square root of both sides. If I take the square root of this side, and the square root of that side, put plus or minus, I get n plus 7 equals plus or minus 8. So n plus 7 is equal to 8, and also n plus 7 is equal to negative 8. Subtract 8, subtract 8, you get n equals to 1. Subtract 7, subtract, did I say 8? Subtract 7, subtract 7, you get n equals 1. Minus 7, minus 7, you get n equals to negative 15. And therefore your solution set looks like 1 and negative 15. Okay. Let me make that solution set, not a parenthesis. Sorry about that. Should be a solution set. There we go. Okay, for problem 28, we're going to use the quadratic formula where x is equal to this value here. In this case, a equals 2, b equals 3, c equals to negative 1. So minus b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Notice the double negatives there all over 2 times a. So we get minus 3 plus and minus the square root of 9 plus 8. And there's the two negatives. 9 plus 8 is uh, 17 all over 4. And that's actually your answer right there because nothing reduces. So we have x equals to negative 3 plus the square root of 17 all over 4 comma negative 3 minus the square root of 17. 